But if I was going to talk about one holiday horror film, I think the only one that really, except for like what we talked about April Fool's Day that we just referred to, the only one that truly bears a discussion is Silent Night, Deadly Night. Yeah, I was just going to bring that one up. I mean, it's it's amazing. It, that movie's amazing. It's an amazing, the sledding scene, that movie, yeah. I I don't know if I've ever cheered louder in a movie than the decapitation and the sledding. People who don't understand the concept of slasher movies and people who don't understand the concept of that style of 70s, 80s horror, you know, to them, it's all violent porno as far as they're concerned because they just don't get it. And most of the films that they made a big deal about, I wish they were closer to what they think they were. I wish they were that strong. I wish they were that rough. They're, they're making a mountain out of a molehill. Silent Night, Deadly Night is fucked up for a horror film fan. Yeah. If you've seen all the slashers, you're a little taken aback by Silent Night, Deadly Night. And not because it's shot so cruddy or it looks like a, a 70s it's roughy or anything. It's not like Nightmare, all right? You know, it, it's... Uh, 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 <laughs> it's not... It's, it, it, it's not that, like, the filmmaking itself looks sleazy. It's what they're shooting is sleazy. And there's something really uncomfortable about that movie. And it, uh, it's very violent. I really like the lead kid in it. I really, I, I like them both. I like, I, I like him as a, as a young man. I like him as a little boy. And I like him as an adult. But one of the things that works really well in that movie is, and this is where it breaks form with the other slasher films. The other slasher film, what makes them slasher films is is their their genre is so rigid. You know, they, they all kind of follow the same playbook to one degree or another. It's almost part of the fun of them. And one of the playbooks that they've always followed is there might be an inciting incident that turns the killer into the killer, like in Terror Train or something like that. Rosemary's Killer. Rosemary's the Killer. Prowler. Yeah. The Prowler. There might be a, there might be an incident that makes that happen. But you don't see their lives for 20 minutes or so. You yeah, know. it starts with prom night with a bunch of kids and then they're adults. So Yeah, anyway. how, how, how they became who they became. Rob Zombie did that when he did his Halloween. He was like, no, 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 let's really, let's see Michael Myers when he was younger. Let's, let's build Michael Myers before he puts on the mask. And I, that's one of the things I really like about that movie. Silent Night, Deadly Night spends 20 minutes with this little boy to show you his horrible life that he has, that made him this, the way he is. And frankly, that's as harrowing a story of a little boy <laughs> trying to make his way in the world with those horrible nuns and everything that happens to him as I've ever seen in any movie. Fuck for show, all right? It's, it's the opening 20 minutes <laughs> of Silent Di Night, Deadly Night. And, and the weird part about it is, as fucked up as that kid's life is, I watch that movie and I go, that's a little too close to how I was raised. <laughs> wow. People, people were that mean to me when I was a kid. Adults were actually that mean. Not, I'm not saying everybody was, but I, I, it's, I saw myself in that kid. I go, that is, it's so that, is that is too close to my childhood. N nothing that bad happened, but that's definitely too close to my it's childhood. too close. All right. But and I mean, the it. thing. But the thing is, the entire section when he's trapped in the toy store. Yeah. I mean, talking about fucking around with your perspective of, of things that you know, in this weird violent milieu, is when you have the killer in the in the Santa Claus outfit, but he's in a toy store. So every scene you watch behind him is. Muppet toys, there's Kermit, there's Miss Piggy, he turns down another aisle, and, and it is like Bugs Bunny and Snoopy, and he turns down another aisle, and it's Mickey Mouse and Goofy and Donald Duck. I mean, it's every character you've ever known that has, and he, those characters witness the entire night of murder. They are in every shot at a certain point in the last 20 minutes of the movie. I mean, it just starts being funny how you're like having a staring contest with Kermit. <laughs> there, hey, there's, okay. Oh, he's killing her. They're like, you see a, a Snoopy right there. <laughs> <laughs> you would never be able to get away with using all those characters in the background anymore. They could do that then. I'm a big fan.